Hello Canva Create, my name is Jesse Hughes and I'm so excited to be joining you today from Leonardo AI. Now today's workshop, we are going to be bringing ourselves with the power of generative AI uh, into our social media asset. Now, as you can see, this is me animated, which is what we're going to be working through today. However, I get up to a lot with my Laura. So this is trained on my face. This is an element um, which I am able to explore the world with, be in movies, be in campaigns. Um, and this is all created using Leonardo AI. So I hope you get an idea of what you can get up to with such an incredible tool. Even something like this. I hope you're not scared of heights. So with Leonardo AI, you're able to have infinite possibilities. And by that, I mean everything from graphic design to illustration to cinematic shots, all of this beautiful, beautiful content that you can bring to life using generative capabilities. Leonardo AI is a, is a massive platform. So we're a content, a content suite. And by that, I mean you're able to do everything from creating images through to videos. We have an incredible upscaler. Um, and so all of these tools are in one place so you can stay in your creative flow. Now we have many, many, many users at Leonardo. We've got over 30 million users and we're from 180 different countries that we operate in. So we're totally, totally global, being able to bring creative visions to life at ease. Now you might wonder why we're here and that is through Canva's acquisition of Leonardo. So last year we were very lucky to join the Canva family um, and what this has enabled is for Canva to be backed with amazing cutting edge AI capabilities and for us to be empowered with a creative community. So you might have seen Canva's Dream Lab. We are very proud to have helped um, in the creation of Dream Lab. So this is powered by Leonardo's technology um, and it's an incredible tool in suite. With Leonardo, we're a separate tool as well um, and being able to create, again, a whole suite of content. Let's get into what we're doing today. So today we have a massive workshop which is in creating a stunning asset like this. Um, now I have changed my hair. This is usually what my hair looks like um, with blonde curls. Obviously you can get the eye color across, you can get expressions um, and get a whole background. So let's kind of crack into how we're, gonna, how we're gonna make this today. Now all you will need is a photo of yourself. This is simply one taken from my LinkedIn. So you can use something that's just on your Instagram, on your LinkedIn, um, or you can quickly take one right now just with your cell phone. Okay, so as we said, we're gonna access a photo of yourself and just have that in your downloads folder or have somewhere accessible on your computer. Then we're gonna be going into Leonardo. So I'm gonna jump over to Leo. So if this is the first time that you're opening up the Leonardo interface, um, down the left column, you'll see that we have image, flow state, video. Um, you'll be able to see community generations and we've got feature guides as well at the top. For today, we're gonna to be going into image because that is where we are creating. Brilliant. Now, when this loads up, uh, in the left, the left side of the column is where we have all of our uh, settings and presets. And there is a whole bunch of different options that you can choose from. All of these different models have different um, functions and capabilities. So for example, if you're making uh, portrait photography, you'll put it on portrait perfect. Um, if you're making cinematic shots, you'll put on cinematic, uh, same with graphic design. And so all of these different tools are very strong for getting a particular outcome. Now today we are gonna be using Illustrative Albedo and this is our best model for illustrative work. Now in the style up here on the left, I'm gonna put it on 3D render. Now I want that because I wanna have almost like a voluminous uh, effect. So I'm gonna chuck that on 3D render, brilliant. We have generation mode, so you can either have fast or quality. I'm gonna put it on fast today because I am doing a demo, but you can definitely put it on quality if you have a bit more time to spare. And then you can set your image dimensions. So we can either do two, three, which is great for socials, one, one, obviously. Um, now, another interesting element that we can do down here is add it to collections. Now, collections are what we have for people who work in studios or agencies or simply a team. It's kind of like a, a collaborative environment. So you can work on projects together. So if you are in a team, you can chuck that in your collections. And then for advanced settings, I'm gonna turn on photo reel today. Now you don't have to, but I find photo reel is really helpful for getting those uh, intricate details out in my face. For example, my freckles. Brilliant. So I've got those settings set there. Beautiful. So that is step one. So making sure you have all of your settings in place. So the next piece we're gonna do is character reference. So again, having that picture that you use for your face. Now up here, 
this little button here opens up image guidance. Now image guidance is very helpful if you want to inform, um, inform a new image based off something that you have already. So for example, you could use a content reference and that gives information about a certain scene, depth to image if you're trying to do maybe like landscape and you want to be changing details about the, the building design. We have star reference, which is very popular. Um, that's helpful if you're trying to inform a style across a few different images. Um, similar other tools with edged image. Today we're going to be using character reference because that will inform the character. So I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to grab the photo of my face. Here we go. Great. So that is just a photo of me and I've got the, I'm going to set it to about a mid. You can set it to low, mid or high. I, I usually find that mid works the best for characters. Okay, so now all of the settings are done. We've got that set up. Now it's time to get into the prompt. Now there are two different ways that are really helpful to prompt in Leonardo and I'm going to show you both of them. So the first way of doing a prompt is probably what you're most familiar with. Here we go. Is, is text. It's writing. So this is an example of a prompt. So we can say a vibrant animated style portrait featuring a young character, etc. And so it goes on talking about my physical appearance. Then the second piece says they are wearing and it will talk about the clothes that you want them to wear. You can talk about the background. So this says a solid purple color. And then the third element talks about the style. So it says colorful and whimsical, uh, focus on joy. Um, so this information is what we get like uh, excited and animated with the background. So. If we go in, I'm going to show you this prompt. Okay, perfect. So we've got that there. Again, our settings on the left. So I'm going to put it on fast mode today because we're doing demos. Again, just double checking that photo reel is on. That's how you're going to get the most realistic shots. And I'm going to hit generate. Okay, now as that runs out, I'm also going to show you the second way to prompt. Okay, so the second way to do prompts in Leo is using a function called describe with AI. Now describe with AI is very, very helpful um, if you find prompting uh, a bit arduous. With this, instead you're able to share an image and it will articulate that image into a prompt, which can be very helpful. So for this, we use these magic stars in the right hand column. Now this is where you're able to get help with writing your prompts. So you can either use improve prompt where it will take what you have and build it out or again, you can have a random prompt or we're going to use describe with AI. So let's open this up. So we can use any of these images which I've created previously. Um, again, if you're following with this demo, you can do something as simple as take a screenshot now and use this as an information or download the asset. So if we go put that in there and it is going to articulate what it has just seen. Brilliant. So again, that image that it's just seen, it says that the image is a vibrant animated portrait featuring, featuring young women. So again, the same kind of information, just done in a different way. So if you do find writing prompts um, a little bit hard, don't worry, these tools are there to help you and support that. Great, so we can have a look at some of the ones that we did before. These are kind of close, they're similar, but I've lost a few of the details which I really like. So I'm gonna say edit with AI. I'm gonna now go into editing with AI. So if we have a look at our next step, here we go. This is edit with AI. Now edit with AI is a very handy way to interact with the image that you're receiving on the back end. So if it's close, but you wanna give a few creative notes, that is where we're gonna use the edit with AI function. Here we go. So I'm gonna say, um, add more freckles, add more freckles and how about make her hair longer? Make her hair, make her hair longer. Great. Now, as these are ending out, we're gonna get a bunch of different variety in options. Now, the next final almost step is upscaling. Now, upscaling is what we do to get high fidelity with images. So if you want a high definition image, this is how we use an upscaler. Now, if we go back into our platform, I'm gonna pick one which I wanna, is my favorite. Let's see which one that I like the most few more rendering out. I reckon I do really quite look like this one. Okay, let's say this is the one I'm going to use today. So to upscale, you press on this icon down here and it will pop up the, the full system. Now you can choose between an artistic or a realistic upscale. Because this is an animation, I am going to choose artistic today. And you can choose the strength from low, mid, high or ultra. Ultra upscaling will give you heaps and heaps and heaps of detail. Sometimes it might be a bit too much. Low uh, is, is if you just want a little bit of a flare. So I'm gonna put it on high and we'll see what we can get as our outcome. But definitely have a play with the different scales because some might suit better than others. Okay, perfect. So that is a beautiful upscaled image there, ready to share on social media. Now we get to go into Canva. Okay. 
Now it's time to get this into Canva. So this is one that I've pre-made earlier, um, but if you wanted to follow along, we've got these templates. So I'll go into my uploads where I've just gone and grabbed this image. Perfect, I can drag and drop, reposition exactly how I would like it. So perfect, that asset has now been downloaded and ready to share across socials, uh, making sure everybody's got the word out about Canva Create for this year. But what I really wanna show you and what I wanna end on is Flow State. Now, Flow State is an incredible tool for ideating and riffing and being able to play creatively. So this whole interface is for Flow State and Flow State is to get you in that creative flow when you're at the early ideating stage. Our classic mode was perfect for getting a, a targeted desired outcome, whereas Flow State is great for creative riffing. Now, you are able to set settings from the get-go, such as you know, presetting a shot type, whether you want a close angle shot or a high angle or want something epic or cute, you can set them from the beginning or you can use this as a creative tool to riff. Now we're gonna use Canva's famous rubber duck. So I'm gonna say um, uh, a rubber duck, uh, I'm just gonna say a rubber duck and we'll see how that goes. So if we press generate, um, and now we're gonna get a variety of different styles and interpretations for what that prompt could mean. So we've got a watercolors, we've got sketches, we've got a 3D asset, a moody thing like this. This one's pretty cool. Um, and what this does is able to come up with lots of different ideas. Now, if you find one that you like, you can press on more like this. And it will, again, generate a whole new feed of ideas that you can have a quick scroll through. These are looking pretty epic. Um, I'm gonna go into this one, more like this again. And these will constantly be able to create a feed um, of stunning images. Um, this one is quite magnificent, more like this. It's our last one in the breadcrumb. Now what you'll have seen is it's changed the prompt at the top. It said an infrared image emphasizing colors depicting a rubber duck in an intense, dramatic, stormy sky, et cetera. So because of that, that has then been given a whole series of different images. And there's very small differences between these shots, which can be very helpful um, if you're wanting to test like different compositional variety. Um, now I wanna do it again from the beginning and we're gonna go this time I'm actually gonna set some settings from the start. So if I go into shot type, I'm gonna say that I want a close up shot and I want the lighting to be golden hour. I'm gonna use the same prompt as a rubber duck. Here we go. Done, and get that generating out. Now what you can expect now is to all have golden hour preset and again, having that close up locked in. Um, what I find cool about this is that we're able to get such different variety with the aesthetics. And so this one is locked in a watercolor. Um, and this is, again, a beautiful way to be able to riff creatively with your concepts um, to get something really, really cute. I mean, I love this one. We'll go with that. Um, so definitely jump into flow state if you are ideating and playing and riffing for some creative concepts. Um, I think it's such a fun tool to be able to to play with and get some cool, cool uh, results. We can upscale that now. Again, I'm gonna put it on artistic. I'm gonna put that ultra to get like lots of that uh, fine painting tool aesthetic coming through. So while it renders that. Now what we also do with flow state is being able to take an image and then take it into classic mode. You can use it as star reference. You can use it as content reference. You can use it for all of these different beautiful elements um, that are gonna bring your images uh, really to life. Now we definitely also have um, the folders and collections, which I was talking about earlier. Um, and this is excellent if you are doing um, anything that's on a team. Here we go. Perfect. And so what's great with this is that teams can uh, jump in and collaborate together. So if somebody else wanted to go and play with this, they can press on remix and they can go and turn it into any character that they would like, say, and um, go from there. I hope you've enjoyed creating your own avatar today. We hope to see it all the way across socials. Um, this is just a tiny glimpse into what's possible with Leonardo AI. We've got everything from image creation to amazing video, upscaling, and so many more possibilities. Uh, we've loved being part of the Canva family and we're so excited to see what's to come. Enjoy your Canva Create.